Changes over time are best illustrated through an example. So let's talk about a scenario where an individual has a high level of engagement initially, and then over time that engagement changes. It goes up and then it goes down. And that scenario isn't um, static, meaning that over time the way you measure that individual's engagement is changing. So the key to it is at every point in time when we're creating a measure, it's a measure that is based upon what mattered at that point in time. So if I tell you that a particular member is a 32 today, then that would mean that on a scale of 0 to 100, they are a 32 out of 100 in alignment with the priorities of today. If I go forward next year, and let's say that our priorities have shifted, perhaps this year we were very, very focused on volunteer activity. And so we had a big emphasis in our measurement on volunteer time. And let's say next year we decide that it's the strategic focus of the organization uh, to really build our online community. And so we emphasize the online community aspects of engagement more so. If that happens, let's say this same member that was a 32 the year prior ends up being a 90. And that 90 isn't because they've changed their behavior. Their behavior may very well have been identical from year one to year two, but what we value and what we prioritize in our plan has changed. And so it's a really interesting um, way of looking at it from our viewpoint because most people would look at it and say, well, their behavior hasn't changed. How can their score change? What has changed is the strategy and the, the measure of engagement in our model has to do with alignment between the individual and strategy. So that's how you look at it over time. And even though there's different measures coming into the engagement score over many years, what ends up happening is you have a consistent view of what the level of engagement was and is because it's always 0 to 100. That's what makes it really easy to use as a management tool.